I would really consider using this shoe. I, I, I'm not sold that I would use it. Okay, if I was gonna race in it. There it is. Come on now. Who's got that Takumi Sen 8 in their running shoe rotation in 2022? Technically, um, a late 2021 running shoe release from Adidas. Uh, thank you, Adidas, for sending this along. I do appreciate it. All right. And we're looking at a, uh, a neutral road racing shoe with those carbon rods. Can you see that pink shining through the outsole there? Carbon rods under the uh, forefoot moving down into the midfoot. All right, let's break it down. 33 millimeter stack height in the heel, 27 in the forefoot. I'll just say right now, oh, so much better. So much better than the Prime X. I mean, I was excited about the Prime X just to give it a gander. 50 millimeters in the, uh, in the heel, just too, too much. Oh, it's just such a big stack height. It's hard. It was hard to corner. Not the case in the Takumis. I think I even wrote in my notes, like, uh, not to put donkeys under the bus, but it cornered like a donkey, the uh, donkeys. Although donkeys probably corner pretty well, but I just envisioned, like, what is an animal that doesn't corner well on sharp turns? And I thought of a donkey. So that was what I was thinking about with the Prime X, but not the case with the Takumi Sen 8. Here we go. It is a unisex sizing. So there's the men's and women's sizing on your screen in my, oh, hold on, hold on. I think we're looking at low sixes in my size. Let me just, yeah, 6.2, 6.3 ounces in my size, which is right on par with the next percent two from Nike and the Metaspeed Sky from Asics. And one other, is it the Saucony Endorphin um, Saucony Endorphin Pro Plus, right? That's the name. So they're, oh, where is it? Oh, is it even out here or in here at this point? I don't think it is. Anyway, so that's not a great weight actually for a shoe that's being, which is why the score is a little low for a shoe that's being marketed and advertised as a 5K and 10K shoe rather than a half marathon and marathon shoe. Does that make sense? All right, all right, that's the situation we have. Ladies and gentlemen, on the upper, that same single layer mesh, the same you're seeing, the same as the Prime X right here, okay? Same colorway as, I like the colorway, I like that blue there, Adidas, good work there on the colorway. Um, now let's get into the lockdown. It's, oh, I'm sorry, I just gotta tell it to you straight. It's not epic, it's not awesome, it's not perfect. Um, better, I will say a little bit better than the Prime X, uh, a little better through the eyelet chain, especially here at the bottom of the eyelet chain. I think I gave it a six out of 10. Let's just remind ourselves, it is a unique tongue. Um, bottom line, I think I need a little more padding here at the top of the tongue. I felt the laces on the top of my foot just a little bit, which if you feel the laces, you're hesitant as you're lacing up to wrench down too hard which impacts how much the laces can kind of bring the entire cage of the upper or wrapping around your foot. And the reason I can describe this as I do is because I lace so many different shoes onto my feet, not just every year, but every week that I feel the differences in how the crazy, how the laces are reacting to the upper. Okay. That's just the, that's just where I'm at at this point. I hope that makes sense. And not to mention, the collar and the heel counter. And again, same with a Primex. I personally would probably go a half size down if I was gonna be racing this shoe. I just wanted a little more lockdown in the heel cup, in the pocket right there, all right? This is, this is what I call the heel pocket, right there at the bottom of the heel counter inside 
the shoe. That was a long answer for the upper. There you go for lockdown, and there is the overall score as well. Light Strike Pro cushioning uh, through that midsole with energy rods add some stiffness for snappy toe offs, which I felt. Okay, so that's why the ride and energy is not not too shabby. All right, uh, not quite in the eights, uh, but not too shabby for that toe off. And again, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Adidas, good work. It's got some snap to it, way better again than that Primex, I would humbly argue. But the durability of that midsole, um, not sure it's gonna last forever and ever, all right? So seven out of 10 for the overall score. Outsole, Continental Rubber, and just, they're nailing it. Adidas, you are nailing it on the outsoles. Love that Continental. Again, solid grip, a little bit different. All right, I'll just compare them, why not? Here's the Prime X over here. Here's the Takumi Sen 8. All right, just to see the different outsole pattern for you there. All right, here we go. Fit, true to size. And again, maybe would have gone a half size down. It's not a great fit score because, um, mostly because of the heel pocket. There you go, comfort score. Woo, Adidas. Phone call, come on, phone call. Pick up the phone, give me a call. I'll fly me to, fly me uh, to, uh, where is the, it, it is in Germany, right? The, uh, the headquarters of Adidas globally. I think it's in Germany. I should gotta watch what I say. I'll come over any day of the week, okay? And we'll just talk about these uppers. And the reason the comfort is not great, again, is back to the uppers. And I like what they're doing. It's simple, it's uh, pared down, it's not over complex through the upper, but it's mostly, again, back to the collar. It just feels like the collar is not, uh, not locking me in. Oh man, Oof. let's do it. Let's do it, Adidas. Here we go. Positives and drawback. Positive is the durometer. Sorry, I didn't do it earlier. I like the durometer. It's got some good bounce to it, good energy return. And that drawback again is the collar. Durability prediction, we're going 250, okay. How will I use this shoe? I would actually, I would really consider using this shoe. I, I, I'm not sold that I would use it. Okay, if I was gonna race in it, it'd be 10K, not 5K. Just saying right now, I like a lighter. I mean, even I, I raced a 5K in the Reebok float ride run fast pro oh my goodness these names reebok float ride the two or three years ago awesome shoe for a 5k i like a leaner slipper type feel through my 5k shoes um i would consider it for a 10k road race not a 5k road race as far as how i will use this shoe all right i would also use it for mile repeats, okay, and tempo days, all right? Mile repeats, um, probably on the roads more so than on a track, just because that stack height's a little high for, for my liking, but um, for on the roads, okay? Price point, here we go, $180. Now, the reason I'm not jumping out of my boots about the price point is because here on your screen right now, and there's the score, by the way, here on your screen right now are other shoes to buy that I'm putting into a kind, you know, a little bit of a similar category. Now I realize this shoe is probably the lightest. The Takumi Sen 8 is probably the lightest out of all these. So we've got the Magic Speed, the Fuel Cell TC, Endorphin Speed 2, uh, but the price point is lower on most, if not all of those shoes. So uh, there you have it. I, you know, gosh, mm -mm -mm. I think it's, oh gosh, I don't even know. I like it, Adidas, but let's drop it down to like 160 and you start to get a lot more competitive, okay? Shoe quick specs for the Adidas Takumi Sen 8. One more time on your screen. Six millimeter drop, 33 and 27 for that stack height. All right, single layer seller mesh, light strike pro midsole. All right, there you have it. And last but not least, that 50 mile full review score coming in at 6.52 out of 10, 6.52 out of 10. Ideally, you wanna be in the sevens for my full review score, um, yeah, scoring system, but 6.52 is, you know, better than the Prime X. I'll just put it that way at this point. Brian Botterweck, you get the comment of the day. Here we go, Brian. I think this is being pulled from an old Adidas shoe from 2021. I'm not sure exactly which one. He says, I write when I thought I was done buying, sh getting shoes, um, I am super intrigued by these, especially because of the Continental outsole rubber. I cycle a lot being a multi-sport athlete and can say that Continental makes uh, by far the best bike tires. And for those I didn't mention, uh, Continental, where are they based? Um, 
Are they based somewhere? I don't even know. Where's content? But this rubber, I believe, is recycled rubber from tires or maybe content, maybe, I don't, you know, it's like, wow, that's epic. Like that's just great cross pollination between two huge uh, companies around the world. So continental rubber there on the outsole. And he goes on to say, um, uh, Continental, Continental makes by far the best bike tires. I can't afford them for my car, but people say they are amazing car tires too. So this really has me wondering and they don't break the bank. Okay, there you go, Brian. You get the comment of the day. Question of the day. I don't know how I thought of this, probably because uh, YouTube, I get a lot of questions about my job with YouTube and what I do for a living. And it's just, it's, uh, so the question of the day is, what are some common misconceptions about your job or your career? You know they exist out there, everybody. So what are some common misconceptions, misconceptions about your job or career? And it's just, it, it's, it's, it's a good reminder never to judge because until you walk a mile in someone's shoes, like you just don't know what they're going through, whether they're, uh, you know, I've also often been intrigued by people that fix like power lines, like the big power line. Like that's like, I have, you know, probably a ton of misconceptions about that job, but I know it's a hard, anyway, it's a hard job. So whatever job you have out there, what are some common misconceptions? If you care to share down below in the comments, onward we go to the Adidas running shoe playlist. Adidas running shoe playlist. Right there, right there, right there. All right, here we go. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.